All right. Hello, hello. And I wanted to kind of go over a couple of concepts here with uh, a couple clubs that uh, I really enjoy using. Um, I've never officially put together one video, which is a tutorial just dedicated to these two clubs. And I wanted to take the time to just go over them and put them in my bag. And it is quarterback and rock. So first, let's let's just take a look at the uh, stats here. So quarterback has a little bit less power. Uh, hey guys, thanks for joining. And when you when you break these down, especially once they get uh, full max here, you can see the accuracies are about a hundred for each. The top spin is kind of eh, mid level, nothing too advanced. Hey guys, thanks for uh, joining. But you can see that these uh, ball guides and curl are very very high on these two clubs. So I wanted to just kind of get these two clubs together for one video and I'll do kind of half and half. I'll do some uh, shots with rock and then I'll do some shots with uh, quarterback. Hey Jeremy, <laughs> what's up? So I was going to, let's just start with uh, rock here. And uh, one of the things that uh, you saw about the rock compared to the uh, quarterback is its curl number is about 10 higher. Well, that's going to help you get a little bit of extra distance. Plus, the power is 226 as well. So, when you're looking at two in terms of length, you're going to easily be able to get, you know, an extra 15, 20 yards. Hey, James, how's it, up? How's it going? Play with Horizon. Oh, geez. Let's take a look at Horizon. Now, I, I don't know about that. 31 accuracy. <laughs> that is the worst club in the game. <laughs> so I'm just trying to think. In terms of Tour 5, you're kind of early on in the game. And that's what I'm going to focus on here. So I guess I'm going to go with uh, Viper. 72 accuracy. Let's go with some Viper action for this one. Should be good enough for me to get through this. 72 accuracy. What is that? 1.4. 1.4 per ring. And in terms of a long iron, if it was me, I'd probably go with backbone. Of course, early on in the game, you'd probably have to have Thorn on. Either that or maybe Kingfisher. I remember playing with this a little bit because the accuracy number was so high. Doesn't have a lot of stats other than accuracy that are way up there. <laughs> Grim Reaper. I do like Grim. I, you see my Grim's max? The, the stats aren't... They're not horrible. They're not horrible. It just doesn't have power. That's the only thing. But uh, it is a dunk special club. That you can go with. Uh, I have pulled it out a few times. And uh, aside from that, let me go to uh, Tour 5. Alright, hey guys, I'm back. Got disconnected there for some reason. Not sure why, but uh, I am back. And... Uh, you see, I was just setting up my bag for Tour 5, kind of kind of gearing my bag towards something that you might actually uh, focus on. And you know, I don't have much content, if anything, with Tour 5, so that's kind of why I'm setting up Tour 5. Plus, my trophy count is pretty close. That matching in Tour 5 right now is going to be very, very simple. So, here you see me setting up my bag, and uh, I'm just going to try to uh, explain things to you guys. Oh, let me uh, switch my wedge out real quick. 
I'm, I'm assuming early on you're either using dart or maybe you want just unlock skewer let me switch over to skewer I've been known from time to time to use this down in one in the lower tours just as kind of an all-or-nothing club <laughs> so so it, it wouldn't be too out of the ordinary for me to actually put that on but I wouldn't necessarily recommend that it gives you one option you're going for the dunk on everything so <laughs> So it really makes things interesting if you were to go that route. But uh, here you see me have a, uh, a pretty basic standard bag for you guys early on. And uh, I'm going to go to uh, Tour 5 just to kind of demonstrate the shots more than anything. And just kind of talk about uh, these two clubs, Rock and QB. Right now I have Rock on. And let's see if I can't uh, say, look how easy it is to match. Uh, so, you know, a lot of guys might ask, well, what's the purpose of a trophy dump? Well, you you just saw it, case in point. I just matched here in four seconds. And uh, this is a great, this is a great hole for this. Um, but the, the method that you're going to want to drive here is a little bit unorthodox. Um, I recommend doing it with uh, quite a bit of curl here to kind of generate some power. You see, I'm going to have to go full ball here. And uh, I'm going to try to set up, you know, kind of right center here just to make sure that I kind of keep it out of the bunker. And I'm going to apply quite a bit of curl here. And I was a little early with my timing, but I'm assuming it's not going to be the end of the world. As you can see, not too bad. That's part of the reason of putting on all that curl. And uh, leaving yourself a little bit of room for air. That's uh, one of the beauties of this club. Uh, is the fact that you can pull off shots like that on, on this tour and keep it in play. So... One of the ways to win here is to make sure that you're in play on this tour, or any tour for that matter. Um, you know, I'm going to win a lot of matches just by guys using extra mile. And, that, and that's the reason that I'm setting up this tour tutorial is because there's not a lot of content out there for you guys where guys aren't using extra mile. And extra mile is kind of where mistakes are getting made. And, you know, I'd usually probably use a Marlin ball here to just kind of get the ball out in play with just a little bit of side spin. But I upgraded to a Navigator because it was so into the wind. So I had to make sure foremost that I was going to be able to, uh, you know, make it to the green in two here. So that was kind of the reason that I was going about things the way that I just did there. And as you can see, I can pretty much go pretty full here. But uh, one of the things that you do want to be a little careful of is that tree over on the left over on the left side there. You can curl it, but you don't want to get carried away with your curl. So you see I'm pointing very away from the tree, and I'm not getting too crazy with my curl, but I still want to apply some. And as you can see, it's just kind of heading over towards the tree, but not quite making it to it. That's exactly what you're looking for. And if you get enough curl on it, you can give it a run to actually make the albatross here, as you can see. And uh, the rock here, um, you know, I barely used the power ball. I technically didn't even need the na navigator. I could have got away with a uh, with a marlin here. Um, it it would have just been risky. So that's why I just added one one ball, one power ball. And it's, uh, you know, relatively affordable ball. Uh, I think for the most part you can get away with this entire tour without pulling out something too spectacular. And then when t Tour 10 rolls around, even if you have rock, you'll still be okay uh, pulling out the occasional Titan and, uh, you know, Kingmaker in Tour 10. And 
the way that you're going to go about getting those balls is via the tournament. Uh, you want to try to avoid having to buy them in the shop. And you just want to kind of hold on to those balls for the very last horse. Because as you can see, you know, I had wind in the face, wind in the face, and with a rock, still able to have plenty of yards to spare there without even going into, you know, too much of a power ball. And uh, it gives you that extra benefit of the accuracy to uh, really keep the ball in play. Make sure you avoid the bunkers. Make sure you avoid the rough. And that's kind of the overall number one strategy of using this club is uh, for that sole purpose. And uh, I'm going to do quite a few holes here with rock, and then we'll switch over to QB. I'm hoping to be able to take advantage of some nice hook slices that I can show you guys in this as well. But, uh, you know, the, the par fives are a little tight on this course, so it's not really the best option to use like a hook approach on the par fives for this course. It's, it's, it's much better for the par fours. But uh, the strategy that I use for this one, now I'm going to go down to a marlin ball, is I like to just put it in play. And as you can see, ridiculous amount of ball guide. So what I try to do is I just try to get into that dark shadow or right past it. And, uh, you know, that's just kind of the beauty of this club. It's just simple, easy, uh, and you just... You know, you have about five rings of error on either side to keep it in the fairway. And all you need on this hole is just the ball in play here. I don't try to get too aggressive because when you keep it short here, it gives you a nice clear path to the hole. So let's see what this guy does. Another extra mile. You know, that's pretty much the typical theme for Tour 5. And that's the biggest reason that I'm uh, setting up this video for you guys is because I think this is a great alternative club uh, to really help you keep the ball in play. And you're seeing only a one, two ring, two ring pull there, and it just goes errant into the rough behind the trees. Maybe he'll get out, maybe he won't. But, uh, you know, 100 out of 100 times, I'm going to be right where I just put the ball with rock. And early on with the thorn, uh, the approach that I like to do here is more of a uh, kind of three backspin landed on the green or landed on the fringe, I mean. And I just uh, kind of set up my spin from there. It's usually about maybe three. Let's try this. And I'm usually right around mid club here, which is about three per ring. So you are going to see me do... Right about one, one and a quarter rings on this adjustment here. How did I run out of time? Ah, oh, geez. I don't think I can see what's going on. It's all right. I'll get it next time. Sorry, I couldn't see my time. I don't know if you guys saw. You guys probably couldn't see my time either. So that's fine. I'll just regroup. We'll tie. We'll go to shoot out. It's fine. Well, hopefully we get to shoot out. I couldn't even see my time, so I didn't even know it was tight. <laughs> Let me just recap, regroup here. Um, I already know just from being in this spot that I'm at mid club. So that's why you don't see me sizing this up or normally at, you know, I'd make sure that I'm at mid club, but I already know that I'm at mid club. Because I'm here all the time when I when I play this tour. So I just know, just from being here, that it's essentially mid-club kind of spot on. So that's why you don't see me, uh, you know, kind of figuring out my rings here and just going for it. And there you see perfect ball. Yeah, just... Just outside there. <laughs> Tour, 
Tour 5 difficulties. This is the hardest tour in the game. Tour, tour 11 all day. Can't, can't, can't get past Tour 5 because I time out. <laughs> tour 10 is kind of the same boat. You can get this hole on Tour 10. Pitch this one in too. This is, these are the kind of holes that you just want to be taking advantage of. Put it in play right where I just did on Tour 10 and hopefully get that pitch to fall. I avoided so many shootouts in Tour 10 just by being able to, you know, execute, execute my shot making or, you know, other guys messing up par fives. So those are kind of the things that you want to be thinking about when you're playing your round is just taking care of business, keeping it in play, not timing out, of course and uh, hopefully making that pitch. There's quite a few options on this tour for making out pitches. There's drivable par fours, um, and that's another thing. If your opponent makes the mistakes on those holes, then uh, you can win just, just like that. So here, now we're gonna have Viper, and I believe my Viper was uh, 1.4 per ring on this hole. And uh, one of the things that I always do is I play 30% extra wind here. So if this is for him 3.4, for instance, then I'd play more of 4.5, somewhere in between there, um, miles per hour. And then I'd just use my max club adjustment, which is 1.4. So that's how I go about doing this hole. And... Uh, Let's see how his comes in here. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. It's going to come down and it's going to sit real close. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to pull off a pretty good shot to beat that one. So let's see if I can. What I typically do is somewhere between three and a half and four back spin on this. And 3.6 is the wind. So... Again, just kind of like I said, I'm going to play it at about 4.5. Just a shade over three rings is where I'm going to play this. So you see me setting up there. And then just a shade over three rings. I try to keep it simple for this adjustment for the most part. As opposed to making things too complicated. So what I do is I just do, you know, the 30% extra. And it's, it's relatively close for all intents and purposes. Hey guys, thanks for showing up. Appreciate you guys being here. See if I can't come down and sneak inside here. It's going to be a close one. We're both in here tight. I forget what that other guy was at, but I know he was in there tight. I just snuck in and beat the wit, took it from him. So let's see if we can't keep rolling. The biggest problem with rock on Tour 5, for example, is going to be those drivable holes. But you don't need the drivable to, to win the hole. Um, you know, there's going to be so many times that your opponent can't pull off that shot that you can just play it safe. Um, A, you can still make the pitch from the other fairway. And, uh, you know, especially in Tour 5, your opponent's probably not going to get it on a very consistent basis. And of course, anytime that the wind is uh, in the face, th this hole being ex as an example, uh, there's not going to be too many guys pointing it at the green here. And that's just one of the re another reason that I think this club is so powerful. Now, I am going to do something a little crazy here. Um, I don't really know too much about uh, how much I uh, need topspin wise, but I have been messing around with this shot a little bit. And I'm going to try to hook it around the corner. So here you're going to see me just put on maybe just a touch of topspin, just trying to keep it off the cliff and make sure that the second hop is over the cliff. And it looks like that is successful here. And then, in addition to that, you're going to see me just go about three bullseyes worth of aim here. 
So there's two and then there's three. And let me just go one, two rings just to be a little on the cautious side, just in case. And just hit a max hook here. And let's see if this isn't too bad. And there you see it cutting the corner, getting it to a nice flat spot. Not too bad. Gives yourself a chance at a pitch. If you had an extra mile, odds of you getting it there are going to be very, very slim. Almost impossible for you to get extra mile there. So this is just another benefit to having rock in your bag. Hey Dan, thanks for being here. Appreciate you. Appreciate everybody that showed up here. Hopefully your guys' tournament went well. I haven't seen too many uh, posts. But I have seen a few. So I know a couple of the guys did had a good weekend. But uh, hopefully the rest of you guys did too. I have no idea what my skewer is. I think it's... Uh, oh, I'm not even the skewer distance. I thought I, I thought I would be, but I'm just short. So I do know Min Club... When the, uh... <laughs> the landscape is definitely a good to know about though. But yeah, you're right. If uh, you don't have, uh, if you have an Apple device, you're kind of short-handed there. But uh, in all honesty. Uh, you know, I don't really think, um, you know, hitting it straight here is going to be a big issue for you with the rock. So I really don't think you need to, to watch my tee shot go out there straight. Um, because you're going to be able to do that yourself. So I'm kind of adding this as a bonus I'm just kind of adding this to supplement for you guys just to show you the effects of rock and quarterback as being just something that you can kind of, you know, smash tours with by being able to hit these awesome shots and, you know, bend it around stuff because the curl's high and be able to, uh, you know, have all that ball guide and accuracy. It's just kind of a... Uh, a nice, a nice alternative option. You're going to see basically everybody I'm playing against has uh, extra mile. And this is one that I can do without landscape mode. So I will do this one without landscape mode for you guys. Because it's not required for this shot. So here you're going to see me set up to just do a basic phone curl. And kind of aim for the left of this fairway. And hopefully I can dial this up somewhat accurate. I'm going to do more or less very similar to the aim where I'll do three bull, three ish bullseyes worth of aim. And here you see it bending around the corner, getting up to the green. Do not roll on that green. <laughs> So, as you're seeing, all I would need is a one power ball here for a simple win like that. Or, you can you don't even need to be on the green. Like, you can pitch it in from the front of that green. It's just, I'm just kind of just showing you this as just something that, you know, makes your life easier. <laughs> so, right now, since you mentioned that, Jeremy... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of trying to max Tour 11 with basic ball only. And I'm very close to completing it. So uh, we might have to save that for a separate stream. Because uh, I'm really trying to uh, finish out the, the full Tour 11 run with using nothing but basic ball. And I'm only six games away right now from completing that. <laughs> I'm a terrible, terrible long putter. I should have pulled that great ball to the right. 
I should have known when it was when I hit it perfect that it wasn't going in because I never hit uh, I never hit those perfect. What I usually try to do for that putt is, you know, I'll kind of find the, the right bound of where the pin starts to lift, and then I'll, I'll try to find the left bound of where the pin starts to lift, and then I'll usually just put it dead in the center of those two areas, is what I usually do. But uh, I think you're right, uh, the, the ball guide does uh, light up a different color, just, ev just slightly. I don't know, I can't see it here. <laughs> Such a ridiculous putt. Oh, down in one. We know what this is doing. I hope. Come on, go for the dunk. I cannot believe. So down in one without uh, going for the dunk. That's an interesting club selection. There is a strategy to do. Oh, it was close. Uh, there is a strategy to using it. Um, you know, I, I think they usually set you up more or less pretty close. You just have to pull it back like a few rings and then it's usually just kind of spot on so when you don't have a bot ball guide you can kind of use that to your advantage but uh it doesn't it's it's not exact or anything and of course you can't see what the green's doing whatsoever so you have to kind of know what you're doing to even do that shot anyway but uh let me grab another at least another hole or two and then i'll switch over to qb and we'll do kind of similar even though the stats are similar, what's nice about uh, quarterback, you usually, especially on early clubs, you, you have more topspin from early on. So uh, that's one of the, the real nice things is you get that extra. Uh, that kind of extra aid. And what I like to do on... Um, these is I like to do a reverse curl shot. <laughs> Sounds good, Jeremy. Catch you later. Let me know if you break any records. <laughs> so here I'm going to go at the green this time. And I'm going to try to hit the... Uh, and I can do this uh, somewhat successfully. And I'm just going to try it here. Just to kind of have some fun with this drive a little bit. Is I'm going to try, and this is going to be really good for me to uh, hopefully get a little dialed in to see if my ring, if the amount of rings that I'm going is somewhat close to the right number. So here you're going to see me go about 28 rings, give or take. And we're just going to see if this is in the ballpark. It looks like it might be a little too much. And that's one of the, uh, the reasons that I did that was to just visual, visually see if my ring adjustment is pretty spot on. And as you can see, it's a little too much. So I'm going to start cutting in on that just a tiny bit. And I'll, I'll try this shot again and see if I don't get it the second time. So this is just one of the methods that you can use. If you, if you don't know how many rings to go for a curl, for example, uh, you just trial and error it. If you do one wrong, then you just come in on that aim next time. And that's how I learn how to adjust everything in this game. That's how I've learned. I don't use any anybody else's numbers. I make my own numbers. So... Uh, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, I want to encourage you guys to do as well, is if you don't know 
you know, how much to go on certain things is just kind of play around with it, have some fun, and uh, chances are you'll be able to figure it out. And uh, so this time you're going to see me come in. I'm only going to go 25 rings this time. And I'm assuming this is going to be pretty close. Nope. Wow. It's underplay. But it did hit. That's weird. I wonder if I just had it pointed off the cliff last time by maybe like a ring. Because it looks like the wind played there and the wind didn't play on the other one. I think it is pretty spot on 28. So it might have also been my, re my release point as well. So that's another thing that you always have to consider. Is uh, if your release point isn't exact on the timing. The hook's not going to uh, cooperate the way that you want it. I didn't catch that, Dan. Hold on. So there you see Max Club. It looks like I'm about 80% or so. So here's 50, more or less 50%. And uh, I believe this is about 1.4 per accuracy, which is gonna put this at about three per ring. So I'm probably gonna go right around three rings here. I'll be surprised if I overcorrect this. And there you see relatively spot on. What I like to do on those pitches is I like to try to go to exact numbers. Like for example, um, I'll try to land it on 50% and change my positioning, uh, whether it's top spin, back spin. I'll try to change the spin from that 50% distance number because I know that the rings is going to be... Um, you know, basically a half adjustment. So if it's 1.4 accuracy, then it's going to play like 2.8. Now, the the only problem with uh, when, especially when you're in side winds like that, is you're going to have to go a tiny bit extra on your ring adjustment to uh, basically align that uh, you know side wind adjustment it coming in and changing your ball guide so you have to go a little bit extra rings so instead of going two and a half rings there I went the full three so that's why you were seeing me go three rings there and let me show you real quick the shot that I like to do on this hole um, it's kind of a curl shot I like to get very close to the edge of this fairway over here right on the very tip because it really is going to help you be able to, uh, and here let me try two top spins, see if this is, I usually use one in Tour 10, and I think since you're kind of on shorter tees, you're probably going to need a little bit extra. Uh, I know you have to go an extra adjustment here, so if my normal adjustment's 1.4, I'm going to go at least another ring on top of that. So here I'm going to go, just to be safe, you know, close to five rings, I'm going to bring it back with some curl. And that's one of the reasons that I like to land it so left, hopefully I, hopefully that great ball doesn't cost me, is so I can curl it back and get it going more towards the hole. And here you're seeing me still not enough topspin. It's probably closer to three bars, at least two and a half, because you're seeing me come up short there. But uh, that's one of the reasons that uh, you see me aim so far to the left is so I can curl it back and not have that second hop hit that rough. And uh, again, the things that you have to consider is in Tour 10 versus Tour 5, the way that you need to put topspin on is different. Um, and I haven't been in Tour 5 for a while. I, I know that shot's about one topspin in Tour 10. But uh, whenever you go down a Tour... You have to realize that, you know, the ball is landing a shorter distance than what it would have in Tour 10. So it's not bouncing as hard. And so you're seeing what you always have to do is you'll have to add like an extra top spin or two because of that fact. Since it's landing shorter, it, the second hop isn't as large, so it doesn't roll out as much. 
And here you're going to see me, I'm going to switch to quarterback now. We're going to go through this just a little bit. And we're going to keep going with tour five here. Just playing around a little bit. And again, if you make a mistake on, you know, especially not having my ball guide, since I'm using Viper for you guys, since Tour 5, you're probably going to be on Viper. I'm just trying to kind of wing it without my ball guide. Whereas Sniper, I would have been able to see that that wasn't enough top spin. And as you can see, when you get wind like this, you want to just go ahead and position a layup shot. And what I like to do here is I like to keep it right around the front of the bunker. So if I can put a target for you guys, I like to be right here. So I don't do anything beyond that. So here you see me even putting just a little bit of backspin. You're gonna see me get very aggressive on the bunker because I know that I can't really pull this thing, even with a great shot. Here you see me even going great. I'm assuming that I'm still going to be good. And that's one of the uh, beauties of this club is you see me just kind of cheating that bunker um, with no real issue. And the reason that you see me kind of great balling that to the left is because I know that I can. When you have a win like that that's pointed left to right, it's going to resist coming back. So even though you're pulling it to the left, it's not going to easily come back to the left because the wind's restricting it from doing so. So that's why you see me, you know, being able to cheat that with no real worry. And like I said, you want to get as leftmost as possible. It gives you the best angle for your second shot. I do really like uh, backbone on this one. I like doing it with uh, some cut spin here and kind of uh, just kind of get it to the edge of the hill here and then let it funnel down to the hole. And usually the aim point that I try to hit. All right. Quarterback. Hmm. That is a good question. That is a good question. So, um, you know, Rock is going to take some uh, adjustment. It's going to take some time to, uh, to fully prepare yourself for these shots. Same with quarterback. And in Tour 10, especially, you know, that's going to make things for at least a little while. It's going to take some getting used to. So... Uh, I, I, I do believe it can be done without question. You know, I'm almost certain that, um, and if I ever do come back up and make a tro trophy run in all these tours, I'm going to come back up with using exclusively these clubs on all 11 tours. So that's something to look forward to me in the future. And uh, I can tell you, from my experience, I was able to get through Tour 10 with Thor 2. Um, if you want to check out my uh, Tour 10 videos, I have at least four to five hours of coverage with Thor 2. So if you want to see what that looks like, you can go to my videos. Uh, I think they're labeled Tour 10 with Intermediate Clubs. They're labeled under the Stream tab, not the Shootout tabs. So if you go to my playlist... Uh, hey guys. Hey guys. Good to see you guys. Glad you guys made it. Checking out some of these uh, quarterback and rock shots that I'm doing. But, uh, you know, I'm a big supporter of not using extra mile essentially across the board. So... When I came back up on my guest account, I, I, I think I tried it for a couple tours, like two and three, because I was kind of obligated to. But as soon as I left two and three, I stopped playing with it altogether. Or maybe, maybe I played it through four. And then just basically just gave that club away. It's just, it's just not for me. Um, I don't like having to, you know force yourself into playing a certain way to pull it off whereas with these clubs in fact you're going to see as soon as i get up here just wait until you see my ball guide on this green it's just going to be crazy i'm going to be able to see essentially where the ball goes and is about to stop <laughs> it's crazy 
So it just makes your life so much easier having, uh, you know, these two clubs. They have super, they have so much curl. In fact, you've already seen me, you know, I've still hit a lot of real good curl shots with these clubs. And that's actually pretty well done there. It's, it's, it's going down very nicely. Uh, this tour is a little bit more challenging for this hole than Tour 10 is. It's a lot easier to get your ball stuck up on the cliff in this tour for some reason than Tour 10. Uh, tour 10, it's more of a funnel way down to the hole. But here you can just see my quarterback. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate the uh, appreciate that. So, and this is just kind of what I'm, you know, mentioning to you guys is you can you can really see a lot of the ball guide. So you can you can really see that you need to put some curl on to make this shot happen. And you see, I'm just trying to basically estimate speed-wise more than anything. And then aside from this, I'm just going to go kind of my six rings, and then I'll just use the curl to kind of hit that shot and hopefully just kind of boomerang this hill and uh, hopefully be able to come within his ball. Let's see if I can't. It's coming in a little hot. We'll see. We'll see. Like I said, this this... This tour is actually a little bit harder than 10, in my opinion, to get it close because for whatever reason, the speed that it comes in is just a little bit different. There's a lot more ways to get the ball, and it looks like he just snuck that one out. So uh, there you have that one. It, it's, it's actually quite challenging to actually get the ball on the side of the hole that I just did. It actually takes a lot of work to do that. Uh, the common error in Tour 5 is leaving it short. In fact, way short. It's, it's the one tour where you can leave it, you know, four, six yards short very easily. Whereas in Tour 10, it's actually a little bit challenging to do that. Because the ball comes in with so much more pace in Tour 10. It's like in Tour 5, you have to give it more pace. So that's why you see me kind of top spinning it and curling it. It's like I'm really trying to give it some speed to actually take the... Uh, take the outline of that hole there and that's one thing that greatly differs from from tour 10 i'm really hoping we can get the other shootout a little bit the uh the one that has like six different methods <laughs> to go at it it's the one with all the bunkers and the slope just like that one same course so i'm hoping we can get that shootout before this video concludes but uh i want to show you this shot as well um and this is just another hole where you know you don't have to overwork to do well on this hole you know i'm going to stick with the marlin ball it's a really really cheap ball you know you could pay for marlins for life just by your f opening free chest so you know it's going to keep it uh real affordable but it's also going to give you that edge on the shootout which i uh highly recommend Hello, Praveen. Thanks for joining. And here, you know, one of the things that I just want to encourage you is, you know, not to overdo things here. It's 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 not really necessary. You're going to see me play this quite, uh, you know, safe, cautious. I'm landing it short of the bunker. Uh, you don't need a long, impressive drive on this hole. So here, you're just going to see me basically use no power. And just basically you use this curl that I have to just get it out from around the tree and get it up here far enough to put a three wood, uh, put my wood on it with no real effort. So you see, this is another hole that uh, I did play the tournament. I did play the tournament. I am done. Um, and uh, I posted uh, a lot of shootout guides for you guys, but. Uh, Thanks, DZ. Appreciate it. No problem posting the videos for you guys. Hopefully you guys checked out my uh, golden shot this morning. I had quite a bit of trouble with perfect ball this morning. So uh, one of the holes is very unforgiving to missing your perfect ball, which is the hard hole. Uh, you really have to be on with your timing on that hole. If not, you end up hitting the wrong part of the hill and it just kind of bounces all over the place. 
So that's the one where you really, really, really need to focus and have your perfect ball. So one of the things that I like to do here is usually high backspin. Uh, you don't need to go full, but I am. And you can see I'm just kind of stopping it in front of the hole. You can see I was kind of towards max club there, but just a little bit short. So here you're going to see me come off of this maybe just a shade under two rings, I'm thinking. Because my number is usually 1.4. No, I'm going to go two full rings. And that's it. That will be like 1.7. It's kind of like a mid mid distance adjust number and let's see if I can't get this going somewhere towards the hole not too bad looks like I caught the edge and you have it there's an albatross so there you see um, you know you can make kind of easy work with uh, tour 5 and tour, tour 10 can go very similarly for you um, you just Got to watch the distance a little bit and, uh, you know, up the power balls as necessary. You know, if it's a par five and you didn't get the wind. But at the same time, if, uh, you know, that if that hole shows up and it's downwind, you know, you can pull out a Marlin. You can pull out a Navigator, even if it is Tour 10. You can make it work with these clubs, um, especially since the accuracy is so high. Uh, I was really hoping to get this hole, and I'm glad that we finally did. So there's a couple methods that you can go. Since I have high backspin, I can go off this fairway right here. This is one of the methods. The other skip shot is going to be a little bit harder, but you can still do it. Um, this is going to be more of a run it off the front of the green approach. So that's what you're going to see me do here. I'll do this for you guys because I think this is the more common shot. So I'll just go ahead and do this. And one of the things when you're doing this, make sure you're over adjusting your rings. So you see it's two, which would be two per. You're gonna see me go three rings though. You gotta make sure that you're over adjusting your, your rings. And there you're seeing perfect ball. And I'm hoping that side spin that I get, and you wanna make sure that you catch the rough there, skip it forward. And I was trying to add like some extra curl, get it going towards the hole. But you see with quarterback, you're going to be able to be very, very accurate. And the more into the wind that you get, you'll be okay. You just need to start cheating it a little bit more to the, to the left, more towards the opening, not towards the hole, if, if you get yourself in a weird predicament. Because as, as you can see, spin-wise, you might not have everything that you need. But as long as you have like a quarterback, for instance, that's like a 9 um, you will be able to execute quite a few different shot types on this hole with a QB9 because that's the point that you can, you know, that's where I was kind of showing you that I was lining up first. I appreciate it, Robert. Yep. Hopefully you guys also had uh, successful tournaments. Um, I was able to do, uh, I did Masters this time um, on my main and I was able to, uh, Pull out the win on a pretty challenging setup. This this was definitely one of the uh, you know testier courses for no doubt. So uh, you know it was nice to be able to come away with uh, you know good scores because it was really hard to be consistent on those holes. If you guys played that uh, tournament over the weekend. The greens are very tricky. So, you know, anytime that you could uh, eliminate uh, keeping it on the green, well, well, that's what you wanted to do, which, which was basically just avoid that at all costs. So you see, you know, especially a lot of guys who rely on rapier, uh, that was a very, very tricky tournament for uh, a rapier type approach because then you're running the green, and uh, it gets really complicated to actually execute. So here we're getting kind of into the wind. So usually the approach that I go here is I start cutting back the backspin. So here you're going to see me go 2.7-ish bars of backspin. 
I'm going to set up over the cliff like this. Uh, I always play about 30% extra wind, so that's going to be about 8. So I believe that's just a shade over 5 rings here for me. Let's try if I can't see if I can't get this somewhat on point. And again, that's why you see me kind of cutting out some of that backspin there is to uh, make sure that it gets over the cliff. If you don't reduce your backspin there, uh, those are the guys who usually wind up in the cliff. Because I'll usually go, you know, three and a half. Sometimes if, if it's downwind, I'll go four and a half bars of backspin. So it's always a good thing to, uh, you know, when you're into the wind, adjust your backspin accordingly. I, I mean, it's always something you want to be thinking about. And, and that's what you see, you know, especially if you... Don't cut down your backspin as it's, it makes that hole really hard. Um, and ex especially if you don't know to overplay the wind, that extra, you know, 30% like I do. It's, it's, it's relatively spot on the way that I do it. I, I keep it real simple for you guys by not making it too challenging. Like you, you really don't have to do much curl when you do that 30% method that I use. It just kind of uh, always kind of works out. Now, there is a few exceptions. The higher it gets, you know, once it starts pushing 15, 17 miles per hour, it usually has so much right-to-left hook that, uh, you know, the 30% method isn't quite enough, but it's a good estimation. Um, and then what I'll usually do is I'll just usually put on a little bit of curl to just kind of straighten out the line on that 30%, and it, it, it usually puts it pretty spot on. And this is kind of what I was mentioning about uh, getting this on Tour 5, you don't need, um, you know, extra mile. And, and, and this is kind of the perfect example why uh, at least 50% of the time you get to this hole, your opponent's not going to be able to get to the, to the green, so you're not going to need to get to the green either. So, you know, a nice strategy is to just have this quarterback, have this rock, as kind of in your arsenal. Um, I, like I said, I, I'm pretty sure that you can get through any tours with these clubs, any of them. <laughs> hey Pete, yep, yep. It's been a couple weeks since I uh, streamed, ever since the last tournament. I was a bit under the, under the weather this weekend, so, uh, you know, I just haven't been feeling too well, and that's one of the biggest reasons that you see. Ah, good ball. Even with a good ball, this is it, this is just one of those things that, uh, yeah, if, if anything, the, the biggest thing I did wrong there was I put too much top spin. I usually go between one bar and two, and two bars, and uh, there I'm using. Uh, Two and a half because it was into the wind, and it's one of the things that I notice about that hole. You can't really, uh, you can't really crank up the, the top spin, or you end up rolling through the fairway anyway. And it's really nice to set your if you set yourself up in that fairway, even if somebody's on the green, you can still make the pitch. So I'm doing a little better. Uh, I still still feel a little off, but uh, I am getting a little bit better. So here with Razor, we have, I believe, 100% accuracy. Um, you know, at Max Club, it's probably going to play two per ring. And then I'm just going to kind of size up the half distance, which is about here. So this should be roughly four per ring. So here you're going to see me just kind of set up for this shot and then play roughly a ring and a half. And it's going to get you in the ballpark which is a nice estimation technique. You know, if you can hit your perfect ball, which I was able to, you're going to be within a cup of the hole uh, virtually every time. Um, and if you haven't checked out my, uh, you know, 
rough iron sand wedge and wedge tutorial i have a nice youtube video which explains that method that i just used there very much in depth and it is uh <laughs> yeah i'm sure when you when you go to my uh page here and just scroll down here and see all this crap he's probably like what in the world Oh, and that's another thing. So the first game that I played here today for you guys, that put me at 10,000 exactly. I forgot all about that. But I started streaming at 9999. So that very first game was uh, number 10,000 for me. I forgot to tell you guys. I, I was going to make it a point to mention that and then totally didn't even think about it. I wanted it to be like a memorable 10,000th game. I hope I won the first one. Cause that was my that was my ten thousandth match on this account, and like I was mentioning about the uh, rough iron sand wedge and wedge tutorial, I have it on YouTube. Uh, it covers about an hour and a half, and it is very, you know, very kind of innovative, in innovative and uh, unique method. But it really helps you estimate the distance and. Uh, you know, kind of assign like miles per hour per ring type adjustments. So it makes it real easy for you to get dialed in where you're not guessing what the wind is. As you can see, you know, there was actually something I calculated and was able to get it within a cup without having to just blindly pull it out and just be like going off a feel and just saying, oh, I'll just go adjust this much. Like, I'm actually assigning values to how much I'm adjusting, which is a good thing. I think it makes things a little bit easier. Here, we are going to go with a nice straight ball. And as you can see, you know, the whole bullseye is on the cliff here. So I have a whole bullseye that I can miss. And I'm not using a power ball. And I'm assuming that I can still get to the other side. So hopefully even without the power ball, I can just trickle it over into the fairway. That's all I was trying to do. Thanks, Ian. Yep, appreciate that. Yeah, if you guys haven't uh, seen that video yet, it is, it's the only video that I have on my page that is titled Rough Iron uh, Sand Wedge and Wedge in the title. It's like actually in the title before you even go to the video so if you were to search my page that's how you could easily find it and as you can see this guy laying up um, this is very acceptable method i like being over on this side of the cliff as well That's awesome. That's awesome that you're maxing uh, Tour 8 with uh, QB. Like I said, um, I, I think you can do it very, very easily uh, with only a few holes that could, you know, creep up on you. Uh, and, of course, you know, you might lose the occasional par 5 to your opponent getting there and not. But uh, those times are going to be few and far between. So that's one of the... The real nice things there. So here I'm going to take off a little bit of the top spin, backspin that I usually like to use because you could see the ball guide wasn't running out. So I'm just going to kind of lay back here. And then I'm kind of mid-club. I'm going to use about four rings here, which whatever that would be, 1.5 per ring, I guess. Perfect ball. At least get me... It'll get me in the vicinity. I know that. It was online. I just left it short. So with backbone, with backbone, you're looking at 1.1-ish per ring. And then around mid-club, I play at about 1.5 per ring. And then at uh, min-club, I play at about uh, a little bit closer to two. Those numbers aren't exact. I haven't... Uh, fully map this club but it gets it's a very good uh estimation that seems to work more times than not for me so so 
So I do like playing from this fairway as well. Um, the only thing that I don't like, especially if you don't have the, the most accurate wood on, is being able to, you know, thread it up through there on any given wind. And, uh, you know, especially if you have Big Dog in your bag. I remember my first playthrough, I did play this tour with Big Dog. Um, I really liked it. Don't get me wrong, but uh, if your perfect ball timing isn't uh, very precise, you are going to put yourself in a hard, hard way. But uh, uh, I didn't catch that entire question there. I saw part of it, but I didn't. I didn't get to read that full thing. If you could, uh, there, there we go. Quarterback, but use. Hey guys. So uh, you know, I'm under the impression that you can use quarterback for any tour. I'm I'm almost positive of that. And uh, you know, on my kind of road to glory back up, that's kind of what I'm going to prove is I'm going to uh, eventually come back up with just using these two clubs, uh, these two drivers. So uh, if you can. You know, keep yourself out of trouble. And, uh, you know, you're going to be able to get through a lot of these tours, I believe. Uh, I'm under the impression that you can do it with all of them. So that's one of the things that I'm going to attempt to do. And here you see what I'm doing with this hole. Um, I like to play about 20% extra wind here. Um, but as you can see, the wind's so small, 20% is going to be virtually nothing. So not really too worried about that. Um, but notice what I did with the backspin. It was about four rings, give or take. And you see, I just try to get it up there. Uh, stop. Uh, I try to get it up there towards the hole. Um, I try to keep it away from the right side as much as possible. Uh, there's a, a mega cliff there that you can roll off. Uh, I'm using the rock as well. So the rock, uh, I already went over rock um, for about six or seven holes. I, I, w I went over some hooks with that. I went over, you know, some nice curl shots. And, uh, you know, these two clubs, I just kind of wanted to set aside and just say, you know these are these are great clubs. You can you can really get through. Uh, one of the other guys chimed in. He completed tour eight exclusively with the Rock. So uh, congratulations to him for, on that achievement. Um, I'm I'm under the impression that you can do it with nine as well. Uh, now nine's gonna you know it's gonna have a, a couple of problems. There's going uh, if you guys can think about tour nine. Um, no, it's okay. Don't worry about the questions. No problem. Um, trying the best that I can to, to answer them for you guys. I am going to start unlocking a chest, but I'm not going to open that because I don't want tour five chests. I have real no use for them. So if you want to know why I'm not opening that, that's the reason. And let's try to get a couple more holes here. Here's going to be probably one of the drivables. Now, I think there's two holes that are titled two number four and one's the drivable and the other is the super long one that they added. So we are getting this hole again. And as you can see, you know, last time I laid up, uh, I'm gonna do the same thing here. I mean, if you think about this hole, this hole as like, you know, every time that you're gonna see it, how many times are you gonna lose to it via the Eagle? And, you know, it's probably going to be a very small number. And that's one of the reasons that I think you can get through Tour 10 with the Rock. Um, you're probably going to want the Rock over quarterback, but I still think you can do it with uh, quarterback as well. But I just think uh, the Rock's going to give you that extra push. But uh, if I could get through... Um, if I could get through Tour 10 with Thor 2, which I have video of doing... Um, I have a lot of uh, Tor 10 videos, and I use Tor, uh, Thor 2 exclusively. If I could get through with Thor 2 in Tor 10, that means I can get through with quarterback uh, as well. Just by having the same amount of distance, it's virtually almost identical distance-wise, 
And uh, I think I, I, I put together a, uh, a Thor 2 video where I just used, uh, you know, just I just got par 5s. And I think I, I messed up one of the par 5s out of about 8. So um, if you wanted to check out that video for Tour 10, that's a, a very good guide to look at. Even if, even if it doesn't involve these two clubs, whatever I could do with Thor 2 can be done even more so with quarterback 10. So if you can get through Tour 10 with that Thor, even a Thor 2, Thor 3, then you can definitely do it with quarterback. I mean, there's no question. Because you're only giving up a couple yards. A couple yards. It's, it's, it's virtually nothing. And everything else is statistically better on the quarterback. So just another nice little fact there. And as you can see, <laughs> you can get there, Brendan. Trust me. I am absolutely positive of that. So what you're going to see me do here is about two per ring. You, you could see I saw where max distance was, and I was a little bit inside that. So I'm kind of going to play it at about 90% number, which is about two per ring. And there I am getting my perfect ball. Shooting it up here slowly at the hole. And picking up the eagle, avoiding the shootout altogether. I feel kind of bad. I just matched that guy two straight times. I'm trying to avoid playing the same guy, so... Keep things a little bit more fair. That's typically my uh, way that I do things is I just try to spread it out. So win or lose, you know, I'm not taking too much and vice versa. They're not taking too much for me. So just kind of keeps things fair. Plus gives you a variety of different opponents to play against. Now, since you already saw me do this shot, I am going to do this shot. So you guys are fully aware that this is another thing that you can do. So here I am going to put on a power ball. And as you can see, the benefit of the power ball is, as shown here, you're going to see I'm going to need to come off a little bit of the power, but not very much. And I'm going to play about two rings. So there you're going to see me do that. And I'm going to need to come off a little bit of the power. And, you know, you want to be a little bit cautious. You can overhook this, but you don't want to underhook it because if you underhook it, you're in the bunker. So you want to play this a little bit cautious. You can technically do this in Tour 10 as well. And as you can see, it just kind of easily drifts you into the center of the green in Tour 10. Uh, you know, you might need a favorable wind. Of course, uh, if you ever get this downwind on Tour 10, you know, quarterback is one per ring. One per ring isn't going to cut it. You're probably going to have to play at about 0.8 per ring if you do get this on uh, hole 10 or tour 10. So keep that in mind. You want to be a little cautious with uh, how down downhill this hole plays. Uh, another one that, well, all the par 3s, the same way. Every par 3 on this course, plus this hole, severely downhill. So... Even though, you know, your quarterback's one per ring, one per ring at max distance isn't going to uh, be the right adjustment. So you want to be a little mindful of that. I have no idea what just happened. That's the first time I've ever seen that. This is crazy. Is this me? Still connected. Holy moly. You guys still there, hopefully? <laughs> hopefully I didn't lose you guys. I didn't even see that guy shot. That's the first time I've ever... Whatever just happened, that's the first time I've ever seen it. This is crazy. 
Extreme Health Excellent. <laughs> I don't know if it's my end or his. Because it's uh, everything seems in order here. So, uh, one of the, it's got to be this guy. It has to be. Um, so, one of the things that you can benefit uh, with quarterback is that backspin. You know, that extra backspin that you see was the only reason that I could hit that, that shot that I just hit there. Man, I can't wait until this match is over. Are you guys still here? Can you still hear me? Like, I have no idea what's going on with this. Uh, I, I didn't even see that guy play. I've never seen that in my entire golf clash career to where I didn't even see my opponent do anything. Are you guys still in chat here? Can you guys hear me? It still says my feed's good. All right, now I see the chat. Okay, cool. Whew. I don't. I have no idea what was just going on. But since my stream health says excellent, I'm assuming all is good. And again, same. Same thing as last time we played this hole. I'm going to take this uh, very easily and not overdo it. You're going to see me intentionally kind of aim over here short of this and then just use all my curl that I can put on it. And, you know, this is kind of where this club uh, becomes useful is because only, you know, quarterback, rock, apocalypse have enough curl for you to be able to do that shot. And as you can see, there's no risk attached to it at all. I mean, I, I have a bullseye's worth of tolerance that I can pull the ball and still get it to go. Uh, and I can just do this with uh, marlin balls. It keeps... Uh, it keeps you guys from spending too many uh, balls to use side spin balls. So, hey, hey, Kenneth, thanks for uh, showing up. Uh, appreciate you uh, coming in here. Uh, good luck out there. So here I'm going to do very similar to what you saw me do last time, which is. Uh, I kind of like full backspin here on this Viper. I know almost nothing about Viper, but uh, just getting it done, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of using my ball guide, kind of pointed it right in front, and you, you see that's about, what, five and a half backspin? It's usually as much as I like to use on a wood. I do like it on this hole because of the trees. So here you're going to see me go just a tad over a ring. Ah, that great ball is going to cost me uh, being very close. So it's going to shoot out to the left here. So a little unfortunate there, but uh, we'll be able to see a shootout here. Hopefully we can get one of the other ones that we haven't seen yet. As I do want to kind of cover them. You know, there's a couple driver shootouts that you do have. All, all of this, uh, did you play the winner? Yeah, I played winner games. I, uh, 
if you, got, if you guys saw my banner, um, I, I did Masters this division. And uh, went pretty good. Um, you know, I, I played pretty well overall for the most part. Um, very consistent. I think all my rounds were essentially like minus 14s on almost every side. And uh, there's the uh, Masters banner there. Of course, I did, uh, you know, some touchdown uh, tournaments. Oh, and of course, you see my uh, touchdown tournament down there, which was a uh, silver. Um, the guy who got gold was uh, caught for cheating. So I didn't get the uh, banner for the touchdown tournament, but uh, I did win, uh, you know, first place. For that tournament as well well because the guy that uh, ended up winning they removed from the game <laughs> and so um so that's a good question about the apocalypse and let me see if I can't dial this up as you can see with the thorn you can you can get a sense for the accuracy yep same thing with Tommy exactly so he's gonna have a silver banner so unless they uh, get rid of that guy and what I usually go off of is max distance number here you're gonna see me go about four rings and I'm not going to use any backspin or anything just gonna kind of go go for it straight up and one of the things that you do want to keep in mind on this is uh, you know this downhill behind the hole so you do want to be a little cautious and there you see me getting the hole in one there. Um, so as far as Apocalypse goes, once it becomes really good is a five. But I think it's usable at a four. It's really usable at a four. So if your Apoc gets up to a four, you can use it. But it's also going to depend on your perfect ball too. Because, you know, you're going to give up some, some distance with... Uh, using quarterback but if you can hit it straight every time you know what what's to say that you need to switch to apocalypse at all because if you're in play with that and if you can't do it with apocalypse if you can't match the same you know kind of level of uh accuracy then uh you you might just want to uh slum it down with qb and just uh just use that And here you're seeing one of the more interesting holes. We're going to see if I can't uh, do something a little unorthodox here. Just to see what it will kind of look like. Eh, nah, I'll just go this way. I'll go the normal way. So what I usually go here is just add a little bit of power. Whatever you do, you can kind of see that the way, no matter where you bounce here, it kind of lands to the right. So whatever you do on this hole, you want to always do it with left curl to counter it. And there you're seeing perfect ball, kind of mid-power. Uh, what your goal is here to do is kind of to shoot it down towards the end. You see I'm coming up a little bit short. If you get up there to the end, especially if you put on a power ball, you can go for this green and two. But what I want to just kind of reiterate here is if you play safe Marlin, you know, odds are your opponent isn't getting there until. Whether they're using extra mile no matter what they're doing, they're probably not getting there in two. So you really don't need to force the issue technically. So this is just another reason that, you know, Viper and quarterback is technically enough. Because nine times out of ten, you're going to get to shoot out with Birdie here. <laughs> yep, no problem. No problem. Yeah, extra mile is just kind of the, uh, the norm, and that's... The, the intention of this video is to get guys off of that because uh, uh, what I've been in the rough one time and it was virtual it was my own mistake I was just trying to force the issue a little bit um, and aside from that and even when I even when I was in the rough one time uh, I did it to the extent that I knew I could still get to the green so I do have a kind of a video 
with uh, the the best thing that I have uh, for you that would be you know with the rings for the wedge is that video that I mentioned, which involved doing the uh, rough iron. It it's titled with the rough iron in the title, sand wedge and wedge, and the wedge is covered in that video and it goes over rings. Now I don't cover all the clubs, but what I do do, especially if you have any wedge, you can just use you can just use uh, your rings that you know for that club. So for for instance, in this game, I'm using skewer. Well, skewer has I believe 70 accuracy, which means that it's going to be 1.4 per ring. Half distance is going to be double that, which is 2.8 per ring. And then quarter club is going to be, you know, double that, which is going to be 5.6 per ring. So even though I don't have a video that distinctively lays all that out for you, um, you can use, you know, you can probably use caddy numbers or you could use, uh, you know, your own numbers that you've kind of came up with to be able to use my, the video that I did set aside which has that rough information as to how to play the rings with those wedge shots you can just kind of put the two together and uh really improve your rough uh your, your rough game your sand wedge game and your wedge game that video that i have is very useful tool so if you haven't seen it like i said it's the only one that i have titled with those three clubs in the title so that's the easiest way to find it is just search my videos for those titles and as you can see here, no matter where I kind of land it, it just kind of uh, shoots off to the right here. So, yep, no problem, David. Happy to help. Uh, as you can see, no matter how I play this one, it kind of shoots off to the rough. So virtually no matter what I do, I just kind of aim for this flat spot here, and I usually just curl it. What this curl does is it gets it going over towards the hole, gives me a chance to potentially make it. So that's the way that you see me play. In fact, I did make it. So that's just what you, um, you know, that's just the way that I like to play that there is I just kind of put it towards the flat there and then just curl it in because there's no real distinctive way to put it on the hole any other way. So I just aim for the flat spot, which is going to make it be the most consistent approach. It's going to hit the area that is going to give you the most consistent bounce. And then all you need to do is curl it. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. And that's the easiest way to get this one. Anytime I try to do something a little bit like this, it, I don't know. It just it doesn't usually shoot in as straight for me. Um, and I'll miss either way far right, way far left. I, I just really like bouncing it off a consistent spot on the fairway or sometimes you know you can do it off the green but uh the green can be a little suspect as well i like nice i like going for that nice little valley in the fairway as an aim point do you play that wind shot i, I didn't catch that last comment Let's see where I'm at here. So I'm at, you know, I'm, I'm almost two thirds doing this, uh, done this tour in this video for you guys. So you're seeing a lot of, uh, you know, just kind of getting through here, no real problem. But of course, you know, we haven't had the most challenging par fives yet. I was hoping to get a couple more. This one is one of the ones that fall into the very difficult challenge especially with quarterback so what you're going to want to do for this is from time to time you're going to want to put on a power ball this is the one hole that uh, you know driving can uh, make or break you you don't have a lot of tolerance you can actually see that if i just go over a few rinks here it's putting me in trouble so you know you're going to want to keep your error here within two or three rings try to just keep it as straight as possible so you're seeing me back off just a little bit of power just to be a little bit more precise to make sure that I'm threading it up through here and just getting it to a nice, nice area. Like it doesn't need to be super long. I'm just going at this with Marlin balls. You know, nothing fancy here. All I need is it up here to put a rough shot, like a, a Viper, onto the rough. That's all I need. 
So, you know, I, I didn't even need to hit it as far as I did. You know, 20 yards, 40 yards shorter than that, I'm still okay. Um, that's, that's, this, I, I'm in what you see is the, the ideal spot, but, uh, all you need to do, and especially with that uh, QB, as you can see, all that ball trail, is all you need to do is just make sure that you get it in play, keep it out of that left bunker, keep it out of the rough, and, uh, you know, get to the shootout. That's, that's all it's about for just kind of working through these tours very easily. And then, um, of course, you know, checking out, I have, I have a lot of shootout videos for you guys, so... Um, if uh, you check out on my page, the playlists, um, you know, I have a, a lot of different wins covered for you guys that you can hopefully uh, gain some wisdom on. I really don't remember what I need to do here. I do believe it's about one bar of backspin or so, maybe three quarters. Um, I am very close to min distance, which I'm assuming is about two per ring with Viper. But this is also very uphill, so I don't even think it's going to play two per ring. So here you're going to see me not even go two rings here. Hopefully I'm in the ballpark. And there you're seeing perfect ball. Let's see how this comes in. Not too bad. Looks like I got it. Uh, with Cataclysm, you're going to want to get, uh, I would say, Cataclysm 6. Cataclysm is really not a good club for, uh, unless you're really good with perfect ball, uh, you don't want to lose those, uh, you don't want to lose those shootouts because you have Cataclysm on. So guys are getting really honed in on, ten, on Tour 11. It used to not be a problem because... You know, the level, the quality of play wasn't as high. And uh, the better these guys are getting, uh, the worse an option Cataclysm is. Uh, now, I've been using mine. Um, one of the reasons I like it is to take advantage of par fives. I can, for example, get an eagle that other guys can't on the par fives in Tour 11. And if you're not getting those eagle and winning before, then you probably don't want Cataclysm in your bag. It's going to be easier. Oh, this is a good one. See if he gets it. And we're going to shoot out. <laughs> so, one of the things that you can do is, uh, you know, probably stay away from Cataclysm and Tour 11 for the most part, unless you're really honed in on it. I mean, you got to really be, you got to really be getting that thing. At a high, high level. If you're going to want to try to uh, tackle Cat. You know, I know a lot of guys that use Cat 6 and, you know, they really struggle with it. They have to always uh, revert back to Sniper. So, like I said, it's a very, very uh, advanced club that, uh, for the most part, I would say kind of stick, stick away from it. Unless your uh, perfect ball timing for shootouts is just on point. Because, like I said, you know, that that quality of play is just increasing so much on Tour 11 that uh, if you're not putting it right on, like on uh, Milano, for example, or, you know, some of those holes where you really need precision, it's just not a very good option. So here, you know, you saw me not use any. I'm going to ever so slightly just kind of topspin it. You don't want to get carried away with the topspin because it does roll down the hill. So you want to be careful with that. Like I said, um, I like playing 20% extra on the wind. So that is 8.4 miles per hour. It's about five rings. So that's what you're going to see me do here. Um, kind of an overcorrection, even though it's like more like four rings, you're going to see me play about five. Just because of it being such a strong wind, it's going to need a little bit extra to probably get online here. And one of the reasons that you saw me put the top spin was to hopefully get it over that crest and get that hold in one. It just stopped on the very front. Um, but like I said, you know, you can't get carried away with that top spin either. Because as soon as it gets over that ridge and misses the hole, 
it has a tendency to roll down the hill. So you got to keep that in mind. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, you can have good success on that hole. How do you read course slopes? Um, practice, I'd say, is uh, I, I just kind of, you know, remember that hole more than anything. So um, it's not necessarily that I'm reading the green because there's no real grid or anything. But uh, I just remember the way that stuff breaks. And so it's just kind of something that I mentally do. Um, there's no real secret other than that. Um, I, I, I played the holes kind of, and I remember them. So, you know, seeing that sniper guide, you know, it's nice and all, but, uh, it's not something, especially once you have a lot of experience with certain holes that, uh, you know, you play it a whole bunch of times, you, you know, that it's breaking. Like for, for instance, this hole, like you, you know, this hole is sloping to the right just because you've played it so many times. So, you know, especially when you're setting up, even if you have limited guide, you just want to kind of put it to the left of the hole. Um, and if, if, if my guide's limited, one of the secrets that I do is I just try to play the, the hops tight. So you'll see me play more of a backspin shot. Or, you know, not a lot of run out. So that way, all that uncertainty, I'm just kind of taking away. And uh, especially once I see... Uh, you know, you know, I can put on a power ball here and I can get it up to where my opponent does, but uh, I don't really need to, so I'm not going to. Uh, in fact, let me see. Uh, if you do uh, watch the replay of this, uh, I do have a very nice hook for you guys that you're going to want to see on this hole. And I'm going to go for it again. So hopefully I go two for two here. I'm going to get a little bit more aggressive than last time because I already do have one successful attempt. So here, you're going to see me get just ever so more aggressive. I did not get that aggressive last time. So as you, if you watch the playback, um, and in terms of a correction that I just went there, you know, it's about 30 rings off the cliff. So if you want to watch what I just did with stacking the bullseyes, I'd stack three bullseyes and just really cut that corner to get myself into a nice pitch distance. I think last time I was thorn min distance. And this time I'm probably also going to be, thanks David, appreciate that. I think I'm also going to be right around Thorn Distance. And you know, especially if you see that your opponent's kind of in trouble, you don't need to really force the issue too much. You can just kind of, as you can see, you know, I didn't do too much here. Um... It might look like a risky shot, but I can assure you after you do it a cut, like I haven't, I, I've hit that shot maybe twice in my life with quarterback. I just know that I can do it because from either doing it with apocalypse or whatever, I just know that I can do it. So that's more or less what you're seeing there. And, you know, just a couple times of practice, especially once you get better with it, is all you're going to need to be able to pull stuff like that off. So here you're going to see me play right about, I don't know, I probably played about 3.5 per ring, because you could see I was kind of towards min club there. And so I was probably going a little bit over two rings there. And as you can see, I was able to get that one as well. So, you know, tour five... So I, I guess this is kind of a nice collaboration of uh, how to avoid shootouts for the most part in Tour 5 because I'm making kind of quick work of this tour uh, with none too real difficulty. I'm not using extra mile. Uh, nobody has beat me out right yet. So, um, you know, this is just kind of one of those things that it just kind of shows you as as you work up in these later tours, you're going to be able to do similar. Now we haven't got. I, I was really hoping I could have got, drew out a couple more of the you know like the especially what is it hole nine, par five. Um, I was really hoping to draw that one out. Now I did draw this one out. And we're going to get another. I think this was one of the first holes I played, um, so we'll get another view of this. But uh, 
as you could see last time, you know, I didn't work, I didn't work overly hard to pull this shot off, and I'm not going to work overly hard to pull this one off because it's downwind. <laughs> so here you're going to see me play, you know, five bullseyes. You see about five rings over. That's going to account for, you know, this wind and make sure that, uh, you know, I got those extra rings covered. And I'm going to go about half power here and, of course, full curl. And there you see perfect ball. And anything right center on the fairway here is going to be enough for you to... In fact, you can see, I mean, look how far I'm getting it down here. This is a marlin. And this is a marlin ball. I mean, granted, it is downwind, but uh, what wind are they going to have to give you that uh, you're going to be in trouble? If you watch my uh, my other shot, it's straight into the wind, and I get rock to a very similar position with a rock. Straight into the wind. It was like a eight wind or something. So, just another reason that you don't need uh, extra mile here. Um the biggest thing about extra mile is needing that precision. You know, this guy has to hit perfect ball. He has to hit a one ring, one one ring great to the right, and that's what he did. So he is probably going to pull this off, but let's see. Nope, because he added a little bit too much power. So had he not added that power, it probably would have grazed the right edge, but that's the type of precision that you have to have with extra mile if you want to pull that shot off. There's no margin for error, whereas I had... You know, six rings I could miss by, and I'd still be okay. So here I'm going to use very similar tactic that I used last time. You know, I'm going to play two, three rings off the edge here. And, of course, you know, you want to use some curl, but you don't want to get carried away with the curl, but you do want to use this, especially when you don't have katana paw on. You're going to want this to get it back towards the hole. So you're seeing I'm getting over to the edge of the tree as much as I can just to apply enough curl to hopefully get this on line or close to on line to the hole and give myself an easy eagle. <clears throat> and in Tour 10, for example, especially if you draw a nasty wind, you'll just want to use a katana or you'll want to use a... Uh, Kingmaker. And that's why I saved a lot of those balls for Tour 10. So if you want to, uh, you know, check out some of my Tour 10 content, especially the stuff that I did with Thor 2, like I said, if I can get through Tour 10 with Thor 2, then I can, you can definitely do it with QB. Definitely. So keep that in mind. Um, I am going to probably stop it here. Yeah, we're at an hour and a half here. Um, I did cover, you know, rock at least six holes. Um, I, I, you know, we're at an hour and a half here. I'm just going to go ahead and just cut this off this video. Um, I will, I will do some more for you guys. Uh, I'll probably switch the tours up maybe tomorrow or, uh, another day or two. Uh, if you guys give me a couple days, um, I'll try my best to uh, jump on here, do some more rocking quarterback with you guys. Maybe I'll do Tour 7, for example. Um, so look forward to that if you liked what you saw here. And uh, hopefully in the uh, future tours, you know, you'll see that this is a very uh, viable option. In fact, it's a very intelligent option, too. Um, you know, like I mentioned, I hit one, one, one rough patch in this entire time playing quarterback and, uh, rock. And, uh, I did it on, in a spot where I knew I could. So, you know, I didn't do anything that was going to force the issue of what I didn't think I was, I would pull off. Uh, and I want to encourage you guys to do the same thing. Make sure that, uh, you know, you're playing within your means. If you don't feel comfortable going uh, that extra power, uh, you know, pick up that Titan ball and, and, and you'll have to use less power. It'll make it that much easier. But like I was mentioning before, you know, you have 
three rings of error on either side where you hit a quarterback, uh, nine times out of ten, you're going to have that much error that uh, it doesn't matter if you do hit it off the edge of the bullseye. So keep that in mind, and uh, good luck out there. Like I said, uh, be on the lookout for my next stream that's going to be covering a very similar topic, and we'll just go over uh, another tour for you guys. So good luck out there. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, uh, make sure you do subscribe to my channel or, uh, you know, hit thumbs up if you like the quality of this video. I'll do the best that I can to uh, post some more videos for you guys in the future and very similar quality to, to this one. I, I really want to uh, open your guys' eyes to this club, these two clubs. They're just phenomenal clubs. They're leaps and bounds over extra mile. Keeps you out of 100% trouble. And you still get your eagles and go to shootout. So... It's win-win. So good luck out there, and uh, keep me posted. Uh, you know, tag me in your quarterback success videos so I can see how you guys are doing. So good luck out there.